This episode of Chat Grab on Cheap Pops is brought to you by zenpop.jp. Use the link in our description for $5 off your next order by using the code GRAPPLE. This episode is also brought to you in partnership with thebubblepanda.com. Bubble tea at home using their boxes that you can get off their website from bubblepanda.com. Welcome everyone to another very special episode of Chat Grapple and Cheap Pops podcast. I am Chris Dredd, here with my main man JB, and we have got a very, what one that's just popped up out of nowhere, basically. Um, myself and the, the man JB, we were at a wrestling show a week or so ago. We saw this guy on the show and thought, fuck me, let's get hold of him and get him on the show because... He, he's he's got many accolades, but one accolade is something that is just absolutely incredible, especially if you know and you, you watch wrestling nowadays and you know how big NXT has become, um, you will know this accolade is just fantastic. So, JB, you all right, bro? You get ready, ready to do this? Absolutely. Let's get to it. Let's, uh, he's waiting. He's ready to jump in. Let's do this. Welcome everyone to another very special episode of Chat Grapple and Cheap Pops podcast. I am Chris Dredd. I'm here with my main man, JB, and we've got a very special guest on, probably one of the hardest working men in British wrestling. He's been all over the show. Um, he's been in America. He's been in the UK. He's been in Japan. And uh, we had the pleasure of seeing him in a wrestling show last week. So uh, we just wanted to welcome the amazing Joel Redmond. Thanks for uh, joining us, Joel. Nice to be here. It's a good collection of figures you've got there behind you. Yeah, bro. I've got uh, I've got a few more in front of me as well, to the bane of my missus. But um, yeah, I've got I've got them literally everywhere, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. Well done. Um, so yeah, I mean, you you've literally, I mean, you've wrestled on for so many promotions. Um, and one of your many accolades is just something that to us is is amazing. It's incredible. Um to be the inaugural NXT Tag Team Champion, um, you know, the first ever um, NXT Tag Team Champion or one of them, along with uh, Mr. Neville, a.k.a. Um, Pac. So, I mean, that that for us was just to have British people as well. I mean, even on the commentary, I think um, William Regal was obviously playing up the, 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 the British aspect of it. So, I mean... Um, that that's something we'll, we'll talk about but i mean we, we could talk about i mean what you're up to now and um you know how you're feeling in the wrestling business you said you're, you're having a kid soon yeah two weeks time we're having our first first child so uh yeah at the moment in the rest of the year i've got a few more bookings that i'll do um but i'm not taking any more bookings for the rest of the year so i'm just trying to take it easy and just uh support michelle a bit and just sort of be there when the baby grows up i had a, a son as well but he was born when i was in america so I missed a lot of his little growing up and stuff because I was over there. So I'm trying not to uh, to make that mistake twice, really, trying to be around a bit now. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was going to ask you, actually, as well. I mean, do you ever think about kind of getting in contact and trying to get back over into the States and doing anything like that? Have you thought about that? Yes, it would all depend on, on Michelle, really, um, just on whatever she wants to do. If she wanted to go out there again, well, if she wanted to go out there, sorry, then maybe I would, but it's kind of up to her, really. No, I totally understand that. We're both parents ourselves, and it's uh, yeah. Um, like Chris said before we before we went on this, uh, you know, get used to not sleeping. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I Boys mean, we, we we um we actually trained in in wrestling for a little while, and we know that you know it, to to make it in this business and and to go anywhere, you literally have to give everything you have. You know, you have to give all of your time all of your energy, you know, and I can imagine, you know, going to the States and, and, and doing that took a lot of uh, effort and a, a lot of blood, sweat and tears getting over there, right? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. It does take a lot of your time. Um, you've got to miss a lot of things if you want to be be a wrestler, especially in the early days. You've just got to try and take as many shows as you can. But it's all about balance. You know, you've got to try and find that balance. So 
some people are better than others but yeah i mean you know if you are at home try and be good to your partner or you know take them out for dinner or something just just finding that balance between the two really is the main thing is that something you found now like recently like you said like recently you've been on tour with all star um how long was the tour uh saturday that week wasn't wasn't long at all really it used to be a lot longer than that you know, we've been back sort of six, seven years for Brian. It would, it'd be much longer tours, but he's getting a lot older now. So I mean, it's just, just a week. So it wasn't too bad, really. Didn't mind it. When I go to Japan, I go for like a month. So that's quite a long time to be away. But yeah, weeks, a week's pretty easy. Um, but since the COVID, you know, I've not really done many week-long tours. So back's feeling a bit sore today. Sort of a little bit, a bit banged up. But I'm sure I'll get used to it. Yeah, I mean, uh, that that's the thing. I mean, you, you know, we, we spoke... Um about your run in WWE. I mean, what, what year was that? I mean, did you start, what, about 20, 2012, was it, or 2011? 20, 2012, maybe, 2014. I don't remember, really. Something, yeah. something like that. I think, it's, I think I came home seven or eight years ago, maybe, I came back to England. So, yeah, play around that sort of time I was there. I mean, I, I honestly feel that you were probably one of the most unluckiest people um, to have like a, a series of events happen because what after you won the championship, the 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 ACL injury that was a legit injury, right? You were out for what a year after that, yeah, about nine months. When I, that was out of action, yeah, that was legit. That was just on a house show, just um, just took a, a body slam trying to land behind the guy on a body slam, just landed the wrong way. And yeah, I was out for I think it's a good, good nine months, but which just you know, it's bad timing. We just, just won the title belts and uh. We're about to, I think we're about to go up and stuff. So, I mean, it was all kind of, the ball was really rolling, but it is what it is. You can't change things. No point in worrying about it. I mean, I was too, I was quite young at the time. I was early 20s. So it's probably quite hard to deal with that in your early 20s. Um, I think if I was now, I'd probably be able to deal with it a bit better. But yeah, it's, it's a tough thing to deal with, but, you know, get on with it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you you had everything going um, as well for you, man. Yeah, I mean, you, you're in a great team with... Um... Uh, I, I don't I always it's weird I'll call him Neville or Pack or whatever but I mean um, you know you're in a great tag team there you're doing really well um, coming through you had I mean you've always had the look as well I mean even when we saw you at the weekend I mean you're in fantastic shape man um, you know so you've always had that look um, you've always been great in the ring um, you know and it was just just really bad luck man I think you know like you say it's we, we spoke about this with other people on the podcast before that in wrestling, often it's like the really innocuous things that you'll injure yourself in. Like you could do a million suicide dives or whatever, and you just knack your knee up doing taking a body slam. Sometimes, you know, it's um crazy. Yeah, it's when you're not when you're relaxed. You know, when you if you're relaxed and it just seems easy, then that's what, probably when you're going to get hurt. So it's always silly little movements. So it's never big moves, really big moves. You're normally braced and you're ready for the impact. Whereas those little movements, you just end up tearing something or damaging something. But Yes, yeah, so it's a tough sport. Like it's a it's a contact sport, so you're going to get injured, I'm afraid. Yeah, I mean, how long have you been in the wrestling business now? Would you say when when did you get in? Uh, I'm going to be trained. If you count the training, it'd be 19 years. But you said from the first show, it was eight, 18 years, I think, from my first match. It was a long yeah. time. I, mean, I was 15 when I started training. 16 had my first match. I think that's crazy. I mean, we we've had uh, Dean Ayas on the show. Um, and uh, I think when you uh, when you came in um, in the early days, he was kind of introducing you as his protege, weren't he? Earlier on, yeah, he was managing me when I was yeah, I was a teenager at the time. Then yeah, he was yeah. my manager for a while. Yeah, that's a long time ago. Yeah, man. I mean, we had Dean on. We had a great chat with Dean. He's like kind of for us. He was like the voice of British wrestling. I mean, we've grew up with FWA and One P oh, yeah, yeah. and all that, you know. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, he knows. He's a real good guy to get on your show because he knows. He knows a lot about British wrestling. You know, he's a real good mind for it. Yeah, absolutely, man. How, how do you how do you feel British wrestling is at the moment? It had a it had a really rough twenty twenty. And where, yeah. where do you think it's where do you think it is at the moment? Do you mean like the speaking out stuff? Ev yeah, everything like that. Yeah, as well. Even COVID as well. Yeah. yeah, I mean, all wrestling was in the same boat for the COVID stuff. And it's not it's not so bad. I mean, the speaking out thing is, is really good to get rid of a lot of people that needed to obviously to get to go and uh, try and clean the scene up a little bit. And to be honest with you, it's, it's good for the younger lads now because it's opened more doors for them and there's more opportunities. So 
there's a lot more talent that can probably break through now, I think, because it was getting a bit difficult for young guys to break through for a while. It was getting a bit bit of a run with people in wrestling. So hopefully it's going to quiet down a bit. We can get some some new guys out there and get them seen. But I don't think it I don't think it's the British wrestling scene is in a bad, bad place. I think it's still still very strong. Um, it changed a lot from when I went to America to when I came back. It was a complete difference. Like it really sort of twisted on its head. And um, it's, it's still good now, I think. I think it's still good shows being churned out. But. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 again, we said this with Dean Ayas, man. I mean, Dean, you know, we, we were talking about all of the British talent that has, has come out of this really small island. Um, you know, if you, if you can think about the size of America and the size of the UK. I mean, and, and the wrestling itself, I mean, but like I say, me, me and Jordan have trained um, in this country and we, we've gone through the, the, the training and we've learned the moves and everything. And like, you know, it is different learning in England to learning in America. I think there's a, a, a certain British style, as you know, you know, the British style of wrestling is is different, isn't it, to, to kind of what they do in the States. There's a lot more different moves. Definitely more grappling based, yeah, for sure. You need to be good at good at holds and reversals and stuff to be. And I think whenever I've gone abroad to different countries, they expect you that from me. You know, you, they would if they bring me in as I'm an English wrestler to Japan, they sort of expect me to be good at, at grappling and mat wrestling and stuff. And if you're not, they'd probably send you home pretty quick. So it's kind of what you are expected to be if you're a European wrestler. Um, yeah, that's what I would, would say. We uh, we had Alex Wright as well from WCW on. And um, his dad obviously is British and he was trained in the British style. And he said the same thing, you know, when you go to Japan, they do expect that if you're that European trained wrestler, they do expect that from you, you know, and it's um, yeah, for sure. quite yeah, a good yeah. legacy to have. Yeah, I've, I've worked for Alex in uh, Nuremberg, did a show there for him once, it was a lot of fun. And his dad, Steve, is like my favourite wrestler of all time, probably. I study his matches all the time. Um I still try and pinch a lot of his stuff and take it to Japan with me and just do a bad version of his reversals, but <laughs> it always gets a good reaction. But yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah, he's a really nice bloke, Alex. Yeah, he's a fantastic guy. Mm. But you you were um you were in Florida Championship Wrestling before NXT, right? Is that right? Yes, when I flew there, it was Florida Championship Wrestling. So that's where I started, which is good. It's probably about 25 people or something. So it was like a, a real small group of you. Um, so that was excellent, and you kind of thought you had a good chance of going up to the main roster, and then it changed to NXT whilst I was there, and then you had like 100 people. So it's, it was still good. Like You had a $4 million performance centre and stuff, but I quite like that sort of sweatbox warehouse FCW training as opposed to the sort of glitzy performance centre. I kind of felt a bit more real in there. Because there was less of you, you had more time with the coaches, so you could get a sort of better training, I think, from the coaches because they weren't teaching so many people. Who were your coaches at the time? So the first six months was uh, Ricky Steamboat was my coach um, when I first got there. Um, and then it was sort of Norman Smiley and Jerry Mercury uh, and Nick Dinsmore for a while. It's sort of all of them, really, because I, I, when I got there, they put me in like the intermediate group. And then we won the tag belt, went up to like the advanced group, like the finishing group, which was Terry Taylor and sort of Billy Gunn and people like that. So I kind of got trained by them all a little bit, which was quite lucky. Um, and then they'd always have like people turn up for a week. We might get Perry Satin or Dean Malenko or someone just turn up for a week and coach us. So yeah, it was you know amazing experience. And uh, you know, I run a wrestling school here in Salisbury now, so it's good for me to be able to sort of pass on some of the stuff that they told me because I'm you know I'm not saying I'm amazing wrestler. I'm just I'm just passing on stuff that I've been told over the years from from people who are amazing wrestlers and just trying to teach my guys now. That's cool, man. Um, tell us about the school. Where is it? Like, um, give us, like, plug the school. Let's have it. So it's here in Salisbury. Um, it's All Star Wrestling South. You can find it on Facebook as ASW South. And then like a little line thing, whatever that is. And then wrestling training um, on a Facebook group. So just, just join that if you want. It's just on mats at the moment. We'll get the ring soon. We'll put the ring up full time. But they've done a good six months now on mats. Um, which I think is really beneficial for them because a lot of this conditioning, we do about 40 minutes of conditioning and then they sort of do a lot of takedowns and reversals and a little bit of amateur wrestling at the end. Um, it's building a good base for them. So that, that's our school. I mean, most of them are already wrestlers who are out on the scene and just they've come to me, I guess, because they want to get a bit better at their actual sort of mat wrestling and stuff and just sharpen that up. Um, but it's a good atmosphere and, 
you know, I, I teach at other schools. Sometimes they can be a bit like a boot camp where it's sort of silent and everyone's doing squats in a line, whereas our school's got the music blaring and, you know, it's a real good atmosphere and good good group of guys. Yeah, man, I remember bumping on those mats, boy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we don't do any bumps. I try and take the bumps out, but um, a lot of the takedowns they do kind of have a bit more of a shoot style to it, so they, they learn how to do takedowns the sort of real way before they just to make sure they can do them properly. So they take a few falls then, but we yeah. do limit the bumps a little bit because you don't want to bump it on mats too much. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not, it's not kind, but um, yeah, I mean, but the thing is, that's the thing, you know, that there, there are different types of schools, man. I mean, some, some schools will just drill the crap out of people and get them doing bump drills on the, mm. on the mats and stuff. And then, you know, there's others that, you know, do it slightly differently. I mean, when, when you came in, um, what did you trained with FWA a little bit as well, right? I did sort of later in my wrestling. Yeah, I mean, I where I started um, was that just down in Devon. There wasn't any schools, and then I heard a school was going to open up, and then the guy dropped out last minute. He was going to run it. So when I was fifteen, I sort of contacted him and said, "I'll I'll manage it really down here, and we just hire out like a gym, um, like a studio in a in a gym, and I'd pay wrestlers to come down and teach us. We had sort of Phil Powers and Andy Simmons and." That's where I met the UK kid who ended up sort of being one of my coaches too. Um, but I met Phil Powers early there and then he took me on the holiday camps when I was 15, 16, um, just refing and, and doing that kind of stuff, putting the ring up. And then they teach me little bits for the show, uh, which was good for me because back then it was quite a long, long summer run they do. And just to be a young lad and you get a few matches on those, just be away every day wrestling was the best way to learn really, I think. Definitely, and it, that muscle memory, just the the repetition, you know, hitting the ropes, doing, you know, just yeah. doing stuff in in a ring. Yeah, there's only so much you can learn in a school. You know, I can teach the boys the techniques and stuff, but yeah, you know, wrestling isn't about the technique. Wrestling is an entertainment, so it's knowing when to do stuff and the right time to do stuff, and and that comes through being in front of a crowd. You know, you, you can learn the best suplex in the world, but unless you know when to do that suplex, it's not going to get the reaction you need. Um, so you have to be on shows and in this business you have to it's just reps you just have to do matches you know you can't be a great wrestler after 10 matches it's not going to happen you need to do a thousand to really learn what you're doing in there and understand how how to wrestle and how to get emotion from an audience um, so yeah but, but they obviously at the school we do is there is quite a lot of conditioning and it is quite tough but I never drill them I don't you know you haven't got to complete it it's just show your effort if you show the effort that's all I need and mm. The guys there are already wrestlers, and I just say to them, it's better to blow up in here than blow up in the match, you know. Um, and if they're going to companies and they're saying that I'm their coach, then obviously, you know, I want a certain level from the boys, and uh, I want them to represent me well because it's it's my name at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, uh, the the show that we saw you in um, this this week gone, uh, you were tagging with Dean Allmark and I think Dean's been in the business for a good few years as well right I mean he's he's got yeah, a few matches un, under his belt I think he's 20 21 years something like that yeah I mean, he, he's had more matches than me I'd, I'd hate to think how many matches he's had but he runs sort of all-star wrestling in Liverpool which is like the main training school and then yeah I run the all-star wrestling school in the south which is in, in Salisbury um and I, I just wanted to start a school because I just thought well I'm getting to the age now where yeah I want to keep wrestling but it's not going to last that long. You know, I'm 34 and I've probably got what's I'm 40, really, realistically. Um, so maybe I'll get into coaching because I like teaching wrestling. Um, then I just asked Brian Dixon, is it okay to call it All-Star Wrestling? And he was more than happy. And they're 51 years in the business, All-Star. So I thought it was a perfect name to have attached to my school. Um, so it works, works really well. Just just so we're clear, 34 is a great age to be. But, you know, we're, yeah, I'm, I'm 34 still. I mean, Chris, Chris is much older than us at the minute, but... Um, <laughs> I still I still feel the need sometimes to get back in the ring. I mean, we um we trained for how many years would you say, Jordan? Like two? Yeah, years? it was no more than two. Two two yeah. two and a half years or something like that, you know, and we were getting to the level where we could probably have have a yeah. decent match on a show or whatever. I mean, we we trained with um uh Sunset Skip, you know, yeah, um, no. yeah, Rich yeah, sure. yeah, um, yeah. and Paul Ash, um yeah. and also with Len Davis in his ring in RQW. Um, in yeah, RQW yeah. House when he when Lem was in the UK. Yeah, I know Lem. Yeah. Um, I mean, you you were champion for Lem, weren't you? You were tag team champion RQW. I think so. Yeah. yeah I, I think, think so. so. Yeah. Long I, time I, ago. Yeah. I definitely yeah. Lem. I remember. I know Lem. Yeah. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I do remember. I think probably Haskins, right? 
That's the one, man. Yeah, yeah, you and Haskins were tag team champions, I think, for a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, well, they're good coaches to have. I mean, yeah, yeah, maybe 34. I'm not not particularly old, you know. I've probably got a few more years left in me. But like I say, we're having a baby in two weeks. And uh, I don't know, some things might be more important. I don't know. Maybe I want to be around a bit more with, with the family. And yeah. who knows what's going to happen? You know, I've, like I say, I've been to America and been that close to going up to Raw and then blowing my knee out. So you never know what's around the corner. You know, that could happen again. So just having that school there is, is always worth doing. And I really enjoy coaching uh, people that want to do better and, and sort of succeed a bit. And it's very, I think it's very difficult now for young wrestlers. I think when I was starting, it was a bit easier. There was less wrestlers around, so it was a bit easier to stand out. There's just so many wrestlers in England now. I think it's really difficult for the guys to get get noticed and get out there, really. And um, I kind of hope that my name's got a, a decent reputation and that when they go to companies and say, this is my coach and my reference. It, it normally gets them a, a foot in the door, which is what they need, you know, a lot of these guys, because they're good. It's just, it's just really hard for the rest of us to get out there at the moment. Do you think it's, it's a case of, I mean, in, in the UK, I think the general standard of, of wrestling is pretty high. Um, do you think it's more so kind of having a, a decent gimmick or having like something that, like you say, really like makes you stand out above every, everybody else? 100 percent you need you just need to be unique you know you need to find that gap in the market and then and then use that to your advantage um i've never had a gimmick i mean i, I i'm not saying they're good or bad i just I, it was never into that as a kid i never i was always a benoit fan as a kid and stuff so i just love the wrestlers um so that's all i've ever really done but yeah a gimmick could definitely help you stand out if you get a really good gimmick um i mean that car car in is a great wrestler but he's got a fantastic gimmick as well so there's people like that who can really use that to their advantage um yeah. But I mean, I just got to find a gap, you know, and for me, probably that gap has been for the last few years, just the physique. Um, and that's just because a lot of, there are some British wrestlers in great shape. There's probably a big gap in that market there for wrestlers in England that could be in better physical shape. Um, so that's helped me a little bit to sort of stand out from the rest. Um, and then in Japan and stuff, I just, I love that British style of wrestling. So I just kind of do that. And then being a heavyweight that can do that style has, has helped me get a, a lot more work. Well, this, that's that's it. That's it. I mean, someone as as you know well put together as yourself, and I'm not trying to you know completely gush over you in any weird way or anything. But someone like as polished of a of a wrestler as you as well, have have NXT UK given you a call? No, not at all. No, yeah. um, I, was, I was told to get in touch with them before the lockdown thing, so I did, and then the COVID stuff happens. Um, and I got back in touch with them again, and uh, it was a lot of talk about me going up there to have a look at me again and stuff, but. Uh, nothing's come of it yet. Um, I mean, I've heard some rumours that I think they're looking at sort of 30 and below age at the moment, but that might change, you know. I always have a flavour of the week, I think, so that hopefully will change at some point. I might get a, a look in, but that is what it is, you know. I've, I've, I've spoke to them, I've, I've showed my interest to them, and then it's the, the ball's in their court, but there's a lot of guys that lose a lot of sleep over it and they get so worried they're not getting signed or they're not getting booked to these, this company or... At the end of the day, if you're having fun and you're enjoying it, then what more do you want? You know, there's no point in worrying. The minute you start worrying about stuff like that, you, you never get anywhere. So. I don't know about anyone else, but I'd love to see Oliver Gray come back to NXT UK. I think that would be, uh, I think that'd be fantastic, man. Yeah, it's a good backstory. You know, they kind of got an easy backstory there, so it'd be an easy enough way to bring me in. But who knows? You know, it's it's quite political wrestling, so I don't know. Like, maybe it's not my group of friends that I don't know what it is you know it could be anything but we'll, we'll see what it is well, hopefully I mean, I'll get another chance well I mean g- going back to your your days in NXT I mean w- before we interview guys we always kind of have a little look at, at stuff that they've done previously I mean um the for me that that match that you had against the Wyatt family to to win the titles it was a fantastic match it was absolutely brilliantly put together um you worked your ass off, uh, like completely worked your ass off in that match. You were fantastic. Um, you know, the whole thing of Dusty being in the ring as well and sending um, matey boy out of, you know, he was on the side and he, when he pulled you off the ring, um, I actually thought you might've hurt your knee when, um, when Bray Wyatt did that, actually, when he pulled you off the ring, I thought you kind of landed a bit dodgy on there, but you sold no, it well, man. Good, good selling. Yeah, mate, it was really good selling, bro. Like, but that that match itself, I mean, you worked with some fantastic people there. Like, I mean, how involved was Shawn Michaels 
um, William Regal, Dusty Rhodes. How involved were they kind of in NXT at that time? Yeah, Regal was quite involved. You see him quite a lot. Dusty was like a head of uh, sort of promo coach and stuff. And we did like promo training on a Wednesday. I think it was Wednesdays. Um, and then Shawn Michaels, maybe I saw him a couple of times, but I don't think he was that involved then at that time. Um, I think the agents for that match was Road Dogg and Billy Gunn. I think they were our agents for that one. So they, they'd have a lot of say in it. You know, they would have, I think we probably put, we probably put it together and then we would have run it past them. But they had different ideas of stuff that needed to have happen in the match. But it all comes from the writers. The writers would be telling them what they want from the match and the agents would lay the message on to you and then you put the pieces together. What did Dusty think of your promos? I think Dusty, he liked me for some reason, but I've, I've got a really bad promo. So I don't think he ever, ever liked my promos. I'm not good at promos at all. I'll hold my hand up to that one. But yeah, we did, I got along well with him. He had some strange ideas. And they called me Oliver Gray. I think he wanted me to do like a Fifty Shades of Gray character. And I was like, Dusty, have you, uh, have you read the books? He said, no. So, okay, it was about like S&M and bondage and stuff. So I don't think it's going to work in a PG PG market. So we, we changed that to sort of James Bond character instead, which was a bit easier to do. But... <laughs> that, that is like classic Dusty though, isn't it? Like you hear stories of like these crackpot ideas and these wacky stuff, you know, and half of them will hit and half of them will miss, you know, but it's yeah, like... Yeah. That one was too hard to pull off. I mean, I like the idea, but yeah, it's not going to... Can't pull that off, really. But the fun thing, well, you, you just got to throw ideas at the wall, though. You, know? you just do different different ideas and see what works. I mean, that sort of Bond thing was okay, but then if you have James Bond and you take away the sort of guns and the woman, it's not much left to it, really. And then uh, I kind of thought, well, did like a Cockney gangster thing with Danny Birch for a while. That was okay, but it was a bit of a shit Cockney accent. So, I mean, it worked all <laughs> right with Dusty, but Brookside and Regal and stuff could see right through it. Yeah. Um, that was like a zombie at one point. Sammy Callahan was like a zombie that he would control on a remote, which is really strange. But you just throw different ideas at the wall and see whether it works. That's, that's crazy. That, that is, yeah, that is, uh, I mean, Fifty Shades, that is, I can't, honestly could never see it working on the no. WWE programming. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, you need to read the books first, I think. I think you just heard the name. <laughs> It's um, I mean, it it was it's always great for us though to see British wrestlers at that level, um, you know, and and it's probably good for the boys and girls at your school as well to kind of see that it is possible for guys in the UK, guys and girls in the UK to kind of make it. I mean, Paige was an NXT at that time, I think, was she? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was signed at the same same trials as me. Yeah, 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 so we were there at the same time. Yeah, it is good. Like, there's a company, well, I'm from Devon, there's a company in Devon called Reach, and I'll go down there and uh, help train their lads and stuff. And it's good to tell them down there that, you know, I, I came from the same place as you guys. It's the, you know, right at the end of England, it's really hard to go and work anywhere because your expenses cost a fortune and, and you kind of think you're never going to make it. But, you know, I didn't make it to Raw, but I had the contract, you know, I've been to Japan. It's, anyone can do it, it's just whoever you want to get out there and put the work in and make put the effort in really and it's not about you know having to know the right people if, if you're the if you're good you're good people will notice you so you just need to keep working hard and, and find those gaps just try and find those little gaps in the market don't try and be the same as everyone else everyone does this sort of sort of british strong style thing but there's no point in doing that anymore because everyone's doing it so you're not going to fit in anywhere there's no gaps in that market you need to find something that's different or something that's missing from the from what we've got at the moment in british wrestling now, that is some sound advice for anyone listening like and trying to break in. Like, you know, strong style is a little bit... Yeah, it's great. Maybe passe, it's, yeah. Like, so yeah, it's great. But it's going to be a guy who lives closer than you that does it, so they're not going to try pay you expenses to go and do that, you know? So it is just finding that gap. And I think just going to different companies, like, yeah, the wrestling school is all-star wrestling south. My boys don't work for all-star. They kind of go everywhere, you know? I kind of get them try and get them working loads of different companies because i think as a wrestler you need to work at lots of different places you can't just stick with one company you're never going to get any better that way you need to be in different environments and different crowds different wrestlers and just wrestling different people that's how you get good absolutely i think there's i think there's a good opportunity for that in the uk as well i mean there, there's quite a few um independent uh, federations and there is some good talent in the, there really is i mean even on the show that we saw recently in st albans um 
I think one of the guys that the the wild man guy, what's his his name? I can't. I, he's been everywhere as well. He's he's like um, been in Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's so worked Gianni, in the states. Yeah, yeah. Gianni Valletta is his name. Gianni Valletta. That's it. Yes. Yeah. So I met him in all Japan. Um, uh, he lives like he's in Malta. So I just said, Lee, come into England and work for Brian because in the summer Brian does that six weeks just every day wrestling. So you'll really yeah. enjoy it. So, kind of got him in, in for Brian. Uh, he did the six weeks, and Brian loved the big guys, you know. So, what Gianni Valletta's a big guy, good look about him, good character. So, then now he's the mainstay. Um, and it's worked out well for me because then in turn he books me for his shows in Malta. So, I get to go and have a holiday in Malta every <laughs> now and again. So it's, <laughs> it's uh, nice, man. Yeah, really he's around. a nice guy as well. We, we, we got to speak to him um, at, the, uh, at the show on the weekend. Yeah, he's a really nice guy. Yeah, him and. Uh, the guy called Key and Kelly have sort of been staying for the week with me. So they sort of stay here and uh, we travel around to the shows together. This this house is normally, if I say gang, when Gangrel's over for Brian, Gangrel will stay here rather than three boys in a travel lodge or sort of Brody Steele, who's a big Canadian guy, stays here too, which is good for me because I get to pick their brains and travel with them and, and learn from them. So it's, it's excellent, really. Man, we, the, the last, I was saying to, because we spoke to Brian Dixon, I think the last show, and uh, Mad Dog as well, when we were at the show, the last Super Slam wrestling show that we went to, that I went to, um, Gangrel, Dave was actually on that show. Mm. Um, and I'm trying to think when that was. I think it was like 2018, like the arse end of 2018. Say um, yeah, St. Albans, yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, Gangrel. I, I mean, Gangrel is one of my favourite wrestlers. I think um, you know he can work really well in the ring. But th that That's that nice gimmick, guy too. yeah, it's just amazing, man. It's um, did, did you watch the uh, the Dark Side of the Rings? You watching a few of those? Yeah, I watched the Luna one. Him on it, yeah, yeah. I watch try and watch more. I really enjoy him. But yeah, he's such a nice guy. I think a good thing with Dave, like, is it, it's so nice to be kind of almost kicks you up the ice that like he does because he's been so successful in wrestling and been so many places but just the attitude on the guy is incredible he's just so down to earth and he's, he's I never thinks he's better than anybody else and uh ever since I sort of met him for Brian and we start became friends I just tried to almost do what he does and try and sort of learn from that attitude because it's so important when you're a wrestler not to have a, an ego or think you're better than anybody else just just be a good guy and be approachable and, and be ready to learn nice to people this goes a long way I think yeah, you you hear about um the you you hear about the bad guys, but you never really hear a lot about the good guys. So it's nice to hear mm. that you know Gangrel Dave is is a nice guy. I mean, he did come across really well, and in, in especially yeah. on the uh, dark side, he he did come across well. He's probably the nicest. You, know, you ask anyone in that all star locker room, there's not a single person that'll say anything bad about him. He's just such a such a good guy. So you want to be like people like that. This should be your your inspiration, really. That's what you want to try and be as a wrestler. Um, switching over a little bit, um, you, so you primarily work for All Japan in Japan, is that right? Yeah, only yeah, just All Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I work for there. Yeah, those Japanese tours are quite uh, known to be quite grueling. Is it? Uh, is it as is it as rough as they say? I don't think so for me. Like because I'm so used to working for Brian and doing the summers. You know, when you're doing like ten shows a week for six weeks, that Japan tour is what. I do a month, probably do 20 shows, 21 shows. And a lot of them are six-man tags or something. So it's, it's not really grueling at all because you, your body's so used to wrestling sort of holiday camps in England. That, that schedule is really easy. So I mean, I never found it too bad. Some of the coach rides are long. Sometimes you do like four or five-hour coach rides. And normally the travelling is what bangs you up more because your back starts to ache seeing the coach. But, but it's good. It's a good experience. Like, it's the best place I've ever wrestled. I, I really enjoy Japan. I really like the culture and the people. So... It's, it's fantastic to go out there. Can make some good money out there as well. Yeah, you can make some really good money, especially on the merchandise and stuff. Like it's just, it's just a different. They the way they sort of view wrestling is very different to other countries. It's incredibly respected. It's proper athletic sport to them. You know, it's there's enough. They just it's really really good good place to go and wrestle. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I did the first tour. I didn't think I'd go back again. And they just offered me. I think five tours in 2019. So I was quite busy out there that, that year. And we meant to go back out in 2020 and then the coronavirus stuff happened. So I didn't, didn't get to go back out. But hopefully next year I'll head back out, um, depending on Michelle and the baby, really. This, this would be a really awful time to uh, to plug our sponsor, wouldn't it? 
<laughs> Zenpop.jp for all your uh, all your Japanese subscription needs. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, we're fans terrible. of Japanese culture as well. We're fans. I yeah. mean, my son loves Japanese uh, culture, the get Japanese sweets and all that kind of thing. So uh, yeah, yeah, it's an amazing so, place. Just the really, people, it's so good, so so and so kind and so welcoming and just a very safe country. You know, you never feel in any kind of danger there. It's a really, really nice place. Who are the kind of people you've wrestled in Japan? You've wrestled got quite a few big names as well, right? Uh, yeah, probably like Suwama and people like this, Ishikawa, um, Miyahara. So any sort of all, all the probably all the all Japan guys I've wrestled. Um, Ultima Dragon. Uh, I think probably the for me the biggest name that I wrestled there was uh, Fujiwara, who's the guy who invented the Fujiwara armbar. That's right. Guy. Wrestled him in uh, Sapporo. I think it was Sapporo. It's up, it's somewhere in Hokkaido, up in the North Island. Um, and he's a pretty old man now. But it was a real honour to get to wrestle him. And all the boys were excited to watch me wrestle him because they thought it would be this sort of real good technical match. So everyone was sort of watching. And um, most of my dragons, like his young boys, he'd come down to ringside to watch from ringside. So that was really good. You know, to be able to say I wrestled him was, was a real cool thing. Did That's he put cool. you in the armbar? He did, yeah. He tapped me out with the armbar. That was the finish. Give me the headbutts and tap me out with the armbar. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. That's a beautiful story, man. And, 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 you know, like you say, it, you've got a great attitude as well, Joel, to be honest, mate, because there would be a lot of people who would be pretty shitty about kind of the, how it happened to you in, in the States and the, the fact that you've got the attitude and you're looking back on stuff and, and looking forward as well. You know, like you say, the, the wrestling school when, you know, it, it's just great to to hear you know the attitude you've yeah. got is is great sometimes things happen for a reason you know like if i if i hadn't got injured then yeah maybe i would have gone up to the sort of main shows and stuff which would have been good but i may never have gone to all japan and you know it's my favorite place that i could wrestle with all japan i've just i find japan just incredible to wrestle and even being full-time for all-star probably wouldn't have happened and you know, I've probably learned more at All Star than I've learned anywhere else in the world. It's been the best place that I've wrestled. So just having those two opportunities, they came off the back of being released. So you've got to look at the positives. If you look at the negatives all the time, it's no good for you. You know, you're just going to get in a bit of a hole when you're going to get a bit depressed about it. So just look at any positives you get. And I'm 34 and I'm still wrestling and still getting paid to wrestle and having fun. So what more can I want, really? Well, that's absolutely it. I mean, that's probably the best way, one of the best ways to look at it is that you're not short of work like yeah i'm not sure i work and i enjoy it that's the main thing you know i enjoy enjoy what i do especially with an all-star just um, it, it's almost especially like i say albans it's almost a chore to have to put your boots on you know you're just chatting with your mates drinking a coffee and then oh shit i've got a wrestle now so you're running upstairs to do your matches it, it, it's such a good team we've got there and such good boys and such a good atmosphere that it's yeah i really enjoy it it's not work at all it's like a it's like a holiday you know and yeah, we will say that main event was uh, was something else. That was, uh, I mean, it was a hell of a start. Everyone was uh, everyone was all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you got to wrestle twice, you got to kill some time. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good. yeah, man. The wrestling outside of the ring into the crowd, and like, I mean, we we've we've been brought up on that British style um, family shows, you know, like mm. the 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 county shows the the holiday camps the theater shows um we've we've been raised on that so even like at 30 how old are you jordan i'm 34 yeah jordan's 34 i'm 39 you know we so even a couple of older guys just sitting at the back and just watching it's like we love going to those shows i've seen some fantastic mm. matches and some fantastic wrestlers like you know even robbie brookside i've seen at those kind of mm. shows you know yeah, yourself sure. you know gang yeah, yeah. The best wrestlers are there, and that's why it's the that's why it's been around for fifty one years. That company, you know, it's, it's it's the best. You know, I don't like that brawling sort of stuff and these tag matches. They're they're hard work for me because it's not my style, you know. But if you gave me the wrestling match, that's where it, it's easy. I don't even have to worry about that, you know. But one on one British wrestling match, it's like walking the park. I think the show, the last show at St Albans, which was twenty February twenty twenty, something like that. I wrestled James Mason there. We did six rounds. Um, and Johnny Kidd's come along to see the boys, really, because he, he knows us all. So he sat in the balcony there and watched the match. And uh, It's a shame that all-star shows aren't filmed, because I think that's my best match I've ever had. I remember that really fondly. 
we had you know, Jolly Kids, a big idol of mine, uh, and the same with James as well. So having him watch from the balcony, we both just really stepped our game up a little bit and did a, a real good six round. So it's a shame that's not been filmed. I've we seen managed, James we get a lot of footage, didn't we, Chris? We got a lot of footage from this show just gone. Yeah. So hopefully there's uh, plenty of plenty of you on there to, you know, we're happy. To yeah, it'd be good to see. And, yeah, yeah, it'd be nice to see. Yeah, those shows are never. There's no internet exposure for all stars, so they're never taped and it's never on the internet and stuff. But there's some real gems of matches that happen there that you'd never even know about, you know. Yeah. Which is a shame, really, in a way. Yeah. I, I mean that that that's the that's the only downfall I think with it because it's been going for so long. Um, you know, it's kind of it it does what it does regardless, you know, and it's mm. you you know maybe um the internet exposure is something that could be um expanded you know they do have a facebook page so anyone who's watching can go on there keep up to date with yeah, yeah. you know whatever shows are happening when they're happening um you yeah, know instagram and stuff and they've got a website i think it's superstar and wrestling look at uk so you can see yeah. all the information on there too february is really busy There's tons of shows next year january february march so That'd be really good, but it's like uh, it's just a touring company, you know. So it's it's sort of different to the progress and the Rev Pro and stuff because it's that touring company. But it's a really good place to go and wrestle, and you know, it's nice to get some. I try and always get new lads on the team because I think it's a really good place for them to learn and just sort of hone their craft a little bit. Um, we had Dan Maloney for the rest of the week join us on the team, and it was really good for him, I think, to get out there and, and do those shows. They're so different to Rev Pros and stuff, and it made him work a different style and it was good for him as a wrestler and there's a guy called man like Doris, so i got on the show on saturday in dudley and um he he really enjoyed that from what i hear as well he did a really good job so some of these guys who are they are very exposed on the sort of i wouldn't say indies because they're all indies but they're sort of sure. more internet dominant companies it's good to get them on all star as well because it's a different crowd there's nothing it's not wrong or right neither is better it's just a different crowd it's a different different type of show and, and like you say, it's good for people to be able to work those different crowds because you, you, you're wrestling a different style. It's not necessarily what they would call a spot show. You know, yeah, it's yeah. not it's not like, you know, flips and suicide dives and all this kind of high spots. It is more the, you know, getting the crowd involved and, you yeah, know, yeah. The, the guys clapping along and the good guy and the bad guy and, the you know, Great yeah, stuff. Yeah, real, real theatre, you know. I mean, a lot of yeah. kids, so you're just trying to entertain the kids, you know. But it's, yeah. uh, it's a different stuff. I mean, neither one's better than the other. It's just, that's the great thing with wrestling. It's the great thing with, with British wrestling is that we have that contrast in shows. Um, yeah. It's really good for us as performers to go and work different types of shows. So um, what, what shows are you working at next, man? You say you got a couple in before you stop for a bit? Uh, again, I've got some in this month, but they're, they're really just subject to whenever she goes into labour. So I'm, I'm meant to be in Southampton on Sunday. Um, I could see CWP, it's a good charity show in, in Southampton. I'm wrestling a guy called Franco Varga, I think his name is, an American guy. Um, okay. So hopefully that I'll be there. Um, I've sort of said to the promoter, it could be any day she goes into labour. So I've taken the booking because it's in Southampton, which is half an hour away from me. Right. But, uh, if, she's a, if obviously she goes into labour, I won't be there, um, but I should be there. Then I think the end of November, I'm with Vortex Pro Wrestling in Slough, um, which is the same sort of thing. Hopefully I'll be there. We'll see what happens. Um, and then December, I've got a few in December for Evolution Wrestling. And then uh, I do, James Mason runs like a little Christmas Christmas run of shows um, just after Christmas at 27, 28, 29th, uh, which is just sort of in the Oxford area and in Chippenham maybe. And that's, that's real sort of family shows as well. So I do those just after Christmas. It's always good fun because it's a real good team. It's just with my mates, really, and we just sort of get together and uh, do the match and have a couple of beers afterwards, and it's a good little atmosphere. So we'll say card subject to change right now. Yeah, it's, it's just up in the air. I mean, you guys, like you see, if you're both, you're both parents, you know how it is, you know. Yeah. I, I, 15th of November is the due date, but she could be tonight. You know, I don't, who knows? You, you don't know, do you? So I've taken the book and I've just said, listen, I, I take it, but. I don't really know. So there's, there's a chance I won't be there. It just depends on when she goes into labour. Are you uh, expected back at the uh, All-Star um, tour? I don't know if All-Star's got any more shows this year. I'm oh, sorry, for next year. For next year, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'll yeah. be there. Yeah, January, February, March. I'll be on those those shows, as many as I can do. Um, to work dependent a little bit in uh, family life, but we'll see. When my son was born, so I was in America, and then it was a cesarean, so I meant to fly back the day before. 
from Orlando with British Airways. And I got to the air, airport and they said, oh, we've sent a, a smaller plane. So 100 people can't fly today. They're going to fly tomorrow instead. And you're one of those 100 people. And I don't really kick off with stuff, but I said, no, I don't want to make a scene here, but my girlfriend's giving birth to our kid in the morning like I have to be on this flight there's, there's no option I have to go on this plane they were adamant no you can't fly I was lucky with a midwife on the flight and she overheard she came and gave me her seats but uh, it was so stressful to get back that I just thinking now I don't want to be away somewhere and then get the call that she'd gone into labor and I don't want to yeah. be in like Carlisle or something and be trying to get home so <laughs> it's like Carlisle was probably it's like the furthest away you could be right <laughs> so... yeah I mean I was booked for a show there at the end of November and I would like to have done it, but I just said to the guy, it's just uh, it's just not going to work this time. It's just too far away for me. Just just in case anything happens. Yeah. <laughs> well, we will definitely see you uh, in February if you're uh, in St Albans again. I think the show's in February it's in St Albans. Yeah, yeah. Well, that'd be good. Um, I mean, I don't know if you guys can bring equipment with you if you want to just get a few of the boys sort of doing a little quick chat with you there. I don't know if that's any good for you, but I mean, yeah, anything I can, I can do that. To help you guys out really if you want to yeah do a couple of quick interviews with the boys and get them out to meet you that'd be great yeah, man i mean um, who, who did we, who did we get jordan in the end we we got a couple of the guys got kong kong was dissing your um your microphone yeah that was yeah a he's a great worker um who's kong, this the the guy that was on the show in st albans and he was in the first match i think first against match. the young lad they were screaming at him to shave his back Oh, he's one of my students. Yeah, Lucian Phillips is his name. Fantastic. Phil. Yeah, very good. Yeah, really, really good. good. Yeah, he's really good. He's, he's he was, very good. He, you know, he obviously has learned from you about working the crowd. Well, he's been resting a long time. Yeah, he just he just comes to me now because he lives pretty close. He just comes and works on little bits that he needs to just change for his character. But yeah, he's, he's very, very good. Lots of talent. I'll, I'll relay that message to him. Like yeah, to man, honestly, tell him we were really impressed. Like we, you know what I mean. We we loved it, man. And even the interview that we got with him, he had the uh, the 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 Steve the 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 t-shirt. Um, oh, Doctor David Schultz. The Doctor, yeah, oh, David yeah, Schultz yeah. t-shirt. Yeah, right. yeah. And um, you know, we just he he was living the gimmick, man. It was great stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's good to get him on, even on your show or something, just to get him the exposure. Because, you know, these podcasts are really helpful for us, for our advertising and getting the name out there and, and helping us sort of reach different people. So definitely when you come in February, let's, let's try and line some interviews up with the boys because it's, it's just good exposure for them. And it, I mean, we really appreciate that. That'd be fantastic. And we, we, we want to keep, you know, do anything we can to help the independent, you know, wrestlers. Because at this time, especially post-COVID, like, you know, on everything's been done online. Everything's been done on the internet. And, um, you know, there are some really good, um, you know, independent guys that have basically got their own websites. You know, mm. they're, they're on Twitter, they're on Instagram, and they're doing, like, little vignettes and stuff online and bits and bobs like that. So, you know, if we if we can help out, we, I'd love to have him on the show. What What's his name? Well, his name's Philip Edwards, but I'll... Uh... I'll send him a link to you guys on Facebook and you can get in touch with you and, and get him on the show for sure. That'd be yeah, idea. and what, what was his character? It was Kong, wasn't it? Like, uh, I don't know, he's a few names. Lucian Phillips is what he normally works as, or it's uh, it Psycho Phil for a while. But they might have called him Kong. I don't it know. was Brian something Brian, Kong, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Brian might have just called him King Kong, I don't know. Yeah, it was, it was pretty much something like that. And it was, you know, he was, I swear he was doing like the kind of claw thing or whatever as well. Yeah, but probably. Yeah. He, he was really good. We, re I mean, it was the first match on the card, um, yeah. and he really got the crowd going. And he was, you know, doing the heel thing. But he, you know, he was fantastic. Oh, good. Glad to hear it. So let's just let's just say all options are open right now for you. If any, if anyone was to call you, you, I mean, apart from obviously the end of this year where you're you know, you're a very busy man, but. Like come next year, if anyone anyone NXT UK, you know, if WWE call again, if AEW call, you're happy to go. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like, but like I said, it, it depends on the show, you know. Like uh, I've been selfish probably for the my twenties with wrestling, and uh, you got to find a compromise with stuff. So I mean, it all just depends on her, really. But yeah, obviously, I just try and work as much as I can whilst I'm still fit and, and healthy, and, and whilst I can, really. But we'll see what happens. So uh, should be exciting next year. There's a few Brits in, in AEW, though, right, at the moment. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that would be great to go out there. I, mean, I would definitely like to, but... Are you watching much of it? Who knows? Yeah, I, I do watch that. Yeah, I just... I don't have BT Sports. I don't watch Raw or anything, but... I do watch AEW because you can watch it on the on-demand thing, can't you, the next day? So I do uh, yeah. And I find it quite good. I find it quite exciting. It's quite good stuff. I enjoy watching the shows. I probably you, um, enjoy enjoy that more than uh, WWE, if I was being honest, um, from what I've seen of the two products. But it seems a bit more edgy, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, it uh, definitely seems a, a bit more edgy. I mean, I would say that, I mean, everybody makes a comparison between NXT and, and AEW. Um, mm. But even NXT is a, a bit more... I mean, they tried to go with the whole gritty thing, but now they've completely switched it up. Have you seen the uh, the new NXT? I haven't watched that at all. I've seen some pictures and stuff or some little Instagram clips. Yeah, it does. I should probably try and check it out, really. I don't watch a lot of wrestling. I, like, I work as a, I'm a assistant general manager of a gym here in Salisbury, and then I'm wrestling, and then, you know, got the kid on the way, so I'm in the gym training, so it doesn't get much time, really, to sit down. But if, uh, I might try and check out a bit of NXT if I get a chance, but... Yeah, I mean, we we have the the WWE network because we were, but our main how we started the podcast was it's like a retro wrestling podcast. So we would watch like old events from WCW, WWF, mm. um, things like that. So we have the network, and that's where we were able to watch. You know, we we can watch NXT right from the beginning. Um, yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. I've got the I've got the network, but I just always end up watching. Like you were probably watching, like the 91, 92, or yeah, I think that kind of stuff really appeals to me more. Um, I think Joel's probably the youngest members. person we spoke to on our yeah, you, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> think you are the you're the youngest person we've spoke to for sure. Cool, you must have met some old blokes then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we we've had uh, Duke the Dumpster Drosy on. Um, yeah. oh, right. We yeah. we had uh, Sonny Ono from WCW. Yeah, yeah. we've had Dean Ayas. Um, oh, we've had quite a few people on now. We we really we we've never we've really even got meant... as far back as Jameson. Yeah, so yeah, Jameson uh... in WWF. Ooh. I mean, we even had him on. Great guy. Um, you doing well then? Get some good guests. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how we've done it to be honest. Like we really just kind of chat to people and just ask them if they're free. Um, mm. We had Kiwi from WCW on recently, um, mm. and there's been a bit of beef with him and Buff Bagwell. So. We're, we're trying to speak with Buff Bagwell at the moment, but the uh, yeah, let's yeah. just say the negotiations are not going well. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, well, um, yeah. But yeah, man, I mean, we've been lucky. We've been very yeah. lucky. Like, we've been, like we have today, been lucky. Like today, we've been very lucky. Yeah. Uh, to, for you to give us your time, and we're really grateful for that. Yeah. Well, thanks. Thanks to you guys for having me on, and uh, yeah, it's good to good to chat to you, and thanks for the exposure. No worries, man. And like I say, we'll we'll be happy to have you on again at any time in the future if you're happy to come. And uh, good luck with the uh, the baby on its way. Yeah, thank you. Cheers. So before it. before you go, it's All Star Wrestling South. There's the training school. Yeah, All Star ASW South. What's the little line you can put on stuff? Is it hy hyphen? Hyphen, yeah. Underscore. Hyphen. A ASW South hyphen wrestling training on Facebook and you'll find the group and then just uh, request we'll, uh, yourself. We'll put a link on the on the video as well. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll yeah, put, it, great. put it down there. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be really good. But, but yeah, that's uh, us. I think we'll let we'll definitely let you go. And uh, you know, we've taken up enough of your time already. So Joel Redman, thank you so much for being on the show. Um, we really appreciate you coming on and chatting about your experiences and we're just really grateful. Yeah, no problems, guys. Thanks very much. Cheers, man. You take care. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Well, there you have it. Thank you so much to Joel Redman for coming on the show and talking to us about everything he knows and everything he's done. We're really grateful for him, you know, taking the time out to be with us to this, well, this evening. And what, what, what more can we say? Yeah, former NXT tag team champion. One, he was the first one to do it. The first one. This is the thing. Like, that is something that no one can ever take away from him. You know, to be the first. I mean, and look where NXT is now. You know, from where it started and him being one of the inaugural uh, NXT tag team champions, winning the tag team tournament. And some of the people that he wrestled, you know, 3MB. Uh, to, to you know, to win that, you know, to come through and, and, you know, the Wyatt family beating them in the final as well. Like I said, 
everyone should go back and watch that match. If you have got the WWE Network, go back and watch all of the matches from the tournament if you can. Um, you know the the and the, I think they were called British Ambition. Yeah, uh, it was uh, it was technically it was Neville and Oliver Gray. Yeah, as a, as a yeah, team. and it was now what a good time that was. Man, watch that match. It was really really good, man. Like I was. Uh, I went to the, I went to Seaside this weekend and I watched it on the way back in the back of the car, and um, I was just like, "Fuck that! What a match, man! It was just fantastic." You had Bray Wyatt on the outside getting involved, then Dusty Rhodes comes down, like it's just oh, fantastic match. And you know, Joel just he worked his ass off in that match. Neville did fantastic. I mean, the Wyatt family are just fantastic as well um we you know i i did think about asking him about luke harper um you know and and stuff like that but you know you don't need to uh go over things like that really you know especially there's a, there's a lot of um there's a lot of wrestling podcasts and and interview channels that are right now clambering to interview people from ring of honor and all that and you know it's like you don't oh, always. Have, yeah, we we totally feel for the uh, the staff or the wrestlers of Ring of Honor right now, but you know, give, give them time to breathe. Yeah, you know, every time someone gets released or something bad happens in wrestling, people are like scrambling to ask the question. So, um, yeah, we don't we don't do that, man. We kind of just feel the tone of the interview, and we just it was just lovely speaking with Joe. He's a, a thoroughly bloody nice bloke. He's just down to earth. Nice chap. As if we weren't British enough. Yeah, he's you know, a bloody nice chap. He's a bloody nice chap, and you know, we just yeah, you know, really <laughs> appreciate him coming on the show because he is a bloody nice chap. And um, yeah, man, that's about it, isn't it, man? It's Halloween. I don't know if you've heard me doorbell go a couple of times from the old trick or treaters. Heard a thing? No, it's been it's been all quiet here as well. It, yeah. Uh, at Casa JB, it's a uh, it's a quiet night. It's you know, we're still in that weird COVID phase. It's, you know, people, it's just, it's just rough, isn't it? But it, we do have plenty to come to, to you and your screens soon. We have uh, footage from the All-Star show that we were at uh, just last week. Uh, we had a great time. Yeah, it was, it was uh, great. Tons of fun. We have very quick interviews with some of the guys on the show, like we just mentioned and uh yeah you get to see us uh working live it we're live pal you know and it, it is good fun just being out there again at wrestling shows i've been you know I, i've been to countless uh brian dixon shows over the years countless i can't i literally can't remember how many i've been to and i've got i'm looking at my phone finger right now um, <laughs> it is right there in front of me. Um, you will see the foam finger on our episode where we show car showcase the show. Um, we've got some more reviews coming up. Hopefully we've got some more interviews coming up, but yeah, again, we've had to postpone a review to put this out. Um, but it was, it was great. It was worth it. Absolutely. Um, I mean, what, what more can we say right now then to, Hit that subscribe button. We have a large number of followers across our social media networks that don't subscribe. You know, you most most of your wrestling fans, you follow us, you like our shit on, you know, Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook. That's right. Hit, you know, slap Chris's bell. Slap it hard. Slap it hard. Slap the bell. Subscribe. If you're a subscriber on Twitter, if you're a follower on Twitter, subscribe to the to the youtube it ain't that hard you can mute the notifications if you want we don't really care but we just want you to be able to follow what we're doing see the stuff we're putting out we've got a huge amount of shoot interviews that we've done with people we've got a huge amount of reviews we've got so much content more than you can shake a stick at and we just yeah if you follow us on social media subscribe on youtube like Chris always says, we don't want your money. We don't. We're not after Patreons or whatever you call them or all of that you know, shite. Yeah. We don't want a 
you know a couple of quid off you every month you know so we can you can get early access for 20 minutes on something we talked about it's no point no we don't want your money we want youtube's money so if we can get that subscriber count up to a thousand we're not that far off come on man and then all you've got to do is watch five seconds of an advert and then fucking skip it and then we can get a little bit of dough to pay for our wrestling obsession and to pay to give you more content because literally all that money is going any money that we ever would get off ad revenue from youtube is going straight into a little pot it's going to be called chris dreads and jb's wrestling pot and then it's going to be spent on wrestling shows possibly foam fingers um better equipment better equipment it is it, it, pretty much we just get a better camera you know it would literally just be spent on shit for the show you know we're not doing it to line our pockets we know that this isn't you know it's not a full-time job for us you know we're both on the grind um, you know, this is fun for us, but if it can help us get some better equipment, um, you know, and just fun because we've got another show coming up, don't we, JB? We do indeed. Um, depending on when you're listening to this, we it will be uh, the 6th of November, is that right? Correct. 6th of November, which I believe is Saturday. Um, there is a show coming up in our home fucking town. That's right. It is literally and this isn't like the stone throw of here to you know leads or whatever we we take the fifth out this, <laughs> Sorry. Is, this is a hop skip and a jump i can walk there from my house yeah, exactly <laughs> that's it it's walk walking distance as in not like you know oh, i'll take an hour it's like 10 minute walking distance yeah and that's uh that's a sweet thing about it um I'm not going to say what the show is or who it is just yet because they haven't got back to us. So. Yeah. <laughs> but we're going to be on that anyway. And like I say, we would like to thank again uh, Mike Mad Dog and Brian Dixon um, at Super Slam Wrestling All Star. Um, they were extremely accommodating. They let us set up our camera. They let us speak to the boys. Um, they let us hang around uh, in the in the shadows. Um, so yeah, thank you very much, Brian Dixon. Thank you very much, Mikey Magdog. Um, and thanks to all the boys and that are on the show. Great night. Yeah, that's um that was really cool of them to give us a give us a few minutes of their time. And we have we have footage of it also, it shall be uploaded very soon. Also, before we go, you know, we talk about subscribing and liking that, you know, follow the social channels if you're not already doing it. Yeah. Um, Thank you to zenpop.jp. Obviously, use the code GRAPPLE for $5 off your next order. Thank you to the bubblepanda.com for you know, those lovely bubble teas. You know, Chris was going to drink one on the show, but he ran out of time. I ran out but of time to prepare, so I just had to uh, do without today. But I do love the Bubble Panda can, uh, dot com boxes. Some, uh, some, some, some of the tapioca pearls right here, you can see them. You know they go go really well with your with your drinks and stuff. Sorry, I'm just there's a box right next to me, so I'm trying to, you know, tapioca pearls in your in your milk bubble teas can't go wrong. That's right, we love it. And again, we just want to thank Joel Redman for joining us this evening. Um, you know, we've watched him numerous times on British shows. We've seen him on NXT, and we just were extremely grateful that he. Um, Oh, for sure the man, the man deserves another run in the big time. Absolutely, yeah. man. Like I say, anyone who's watching NXT UK would be silly not to get him back on shows because, like he said, the backstory, the return of Oliver Gray. Writes itself, yeah. It does. It writes itself, man. Who else to take the title off of the, the one of the two main contenders that have been having it to and fro? Well, Dragon obviously champion at the minute, but... um. Yeah, maybe maybe, uh, maybe a chop for water isn't the best thing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, let's uh, let's let the let's let the wonderful listeners and viewers go back to their dinners or back to work or whatever it is they're doing. Yeah. You know, we thank you all for sticking with us. You know, we love you all. Hope you've had a wonderful Halloween because you know, sleigh bells ring and all that. It's coming. <laughs> Take care, guys. Bye bye. <laughs>